this video, I want to explain the full ending of Modern Warfare 3's campaign. We end up in London, defusing bombs, and Makarov kills Soap, just suddenly. Which felt very, very weird. Makarov told Captain Price, never bury your enemies alive. Never bury your enemies alive. Which basically means to not imprison or capture your enemies because they can come back to haunt you because they're still alive. And also there's a flashback mission in Modern Warfare 3's campaign where Task Force 141 with Shepard apprehended Makarov as he was carrying out attacks on Verdansk's stadium and killing innocent civilians. Now, as it turns out, when we exfil with Makarov, he basically lets Task Force 141 know that he always planned to be captured. This was always his great plan. What's the rest of your plan? This. What do you mean, this? <laughs> Amazing. You're all dumber than you look. Because it was basically a distraction so that he could get them away from the stadium and then it could be bombed after he was captured. So, like I said, this was all part of his big plan. And when Makarov is captured by the task force, Soap says that, you know, he should kill him. Let me finish him. <laughs> John, we have him. He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. And Makarov says he'll be seeing him again. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. Which is, I guess, on the nose, considering, you know, four years later, or however long it was, he then ends up killing Soap. So yes, he does literally see him again and more. And even when Makarov starts carrying out these false flag attacks, Captain Price says, We had him in custody. I should have killed him when I had the chance. I should have killed him when I had the chance. What stopped you? So what does this mean for the ending of Modern Warfare 3's campaign? Well, Captain Price takes Makarov's advice. Clearly after Soap is killed, he takes it to heart and he listens to him to never bury his enemies alive in the future, which means that Captain Price no longer will be taking any hostages. He will always be killing because he regrets not killing Makarov when he had the chance because if he did, he would have saved thousands and thousands of innocent civilians' lives, including the life of Soap, if Makarov didn't exist. Or at least hypothetically. This is the problem with this flawed logic. Yes, he could have killed him there, but we don't know what sort of trickle effects could have followed on from him killing Makarov there. Potentially, it could have even led to more deaths. We don't know the future. And that's why when this quote is even said, Soap says this. I shouldn't have stopped you. It was the right thing at the time, Captain. At the time. Because yeah, it was the right decision at the time and you can't predict the future. You can't just go killing people, even people who are bad, to try and prevent things in the future that you don't even know are going to happen. Because at that point, you might as well just be as bad as them, going around killing everyone. You never really know the ripple effects that can happen from different actions. For example, if they killed Makarov then, maybe it would have inspired an even greater threat as someone could rise from the dust to try and avenge him. Because that's Makarov's own logic. He kills people who he thinks are a means to their cause. I thought you were the good guys. So Captain Price takes Makarov's advice and Laswell, I don't really know why, but for some reason allows him access to get into Shepard's office and he hides in there and then he shoots Shepard in the head. And basically, this shows a turning point in Captain Price's character that he has quote-unquote joined the dark side as Makarov's actor has even tweeted to Captain Price on Twitter. This means in the future and the next Modern Warfare game, Captain Price is going to be ruthless. He won't be taking shit or bluffs from anyone. He will be just killing anyone he wants. And this has the potential to go very, very dark in the future. And I'm excited to see this side of Captain Price. This is definitely the most meaningful thing from Modern Warfare 3's campaign because this is really the the only thing that moves the story forward. We have gotten rid of Shepard after his betrayal, and now it sets up the stage for Captain Price to be very, very dark next game. Just like Alex says, let's get evil. And I also find this quite poetic because Captain Price isn't aware in this moment that he's basically just becoming Shepard because Shepard literally says to him in Modern Warfare 2's campaign, to do good, you've got to do some bad. <laughs> You've lost your mind, General. <laughs> And this is the exact same logic as Makarov as well. Makarov feels like you have to do bad to do good, although his good is basically just Russia being this dominatory force that isn't a mockery of the world. But nevertheless, everyone's definition of good is different, and that's the problem with feeling like you have to do bad to do good, because everyone has a different definition of bad and good, and if you're going to do bad to meet an end goal, then you might as well just be on the opposite side of what you're fighting for. And this is the slippery slope that leads a lot of people to become bad or evil. At one point, Shepard would have probably been 
been in a position of Captain Price and gradually over the years, he started taking more and more leaps to doing bad and eventually his moral compass slipped away entirely. And that's what we're starting to see happen with Captain Price. So I don't know what this means next game, but I do think that it could mean that Captain Price will kill Makarov, just like in the original trilogy, considering the fact that he's going to now want revenge on Makarov after killing Soap. And Captain Price could do some very evil things next game, so I don't know what he's going to do. And if he starts doing really bad things, how is everyone around him going to react? How is Laswell going to react? How is Ghost and the other characters going to react? If he is going off the rails with no moral compass anymore, just guns blazing, are people going to be trying to hold him back and stop him? And if so, how is Price going to react? Is he then going to react poorly to the rest of Task Force 1 for 1? Is this going to cause a major disrupt in everyone's bond and trust? This is really something important to think about next game. And this was a big theme explored in Modern Warfare 2019's campaign. They were blurring the lines between good and evil. They were questioning what actually makes someone good and evil. They were saying, you know, one person's terrorist is another person's liberation fighter. And it really depends on who you ask and the angle you are looking at to determine where the line is drawn between good and bad. So I like how it's now come completely full circle to that theme of Modern Warfare 2019 where Captain Price, after experiencing tragedy after tragedy, is going completely mask off now. And if Captain Price does something very, very bad next game, I wonder if that could mean he could even be killed because maybe he goes too far and it results in just getting him killed. And maybe he even might deserve it if he goes too far. And of course, Gaz has been Captain Price's right-hand man. You know, he basically built him up throughout Modern Warfare 2019's campaign. So if Captain Price does start going off the rails, I think Gaz would be the first person to try and pull him back. But honestly, I do like darker storytelling. I am a big fan of darker stories. So if that's the route they're going with Captain Price, I think I'm really going to enjoy what they have planned next. And I guess the reason why Captain Price takes Makarov's advice and then decides to kill Shepard is because I guess he feels like if he doesn't kill Shepard now, Shepard could further betray them in the future or cause further chaos in the future due to his malicious and selfish ongoings and could cause further casualties in the future. So I guess that was his idea. He can't let Shepard continue to live like he did Makarov, otherwise more people, more innocent people are going to die. However, I just don't feel like this feels earned. No pun intended to Soap's death. And the reason why is that earlier in the campaign, we capture Shepard after he was surprisingly taken hostage by Makarov. We were trying to find Makarov and just randomly stumble along Shepard. Very weird, but apparently, you know, Shepard was trying to go after Makarov, but not very well, gets himself captured. Anyways, you know, Price and Co are very annoyed at that. And Captain Price essentially says, you need to give intel on Makarov, otherwise you will be dead. One wrong move and I'll put a hole through. And the thing is, Shepard obliges and he gives them all the intel he has on Makarov and then that leads to the rest of the campaign and despite Shepard doing everything Captain Price asked, he still goes and kills him. And that's why this whole scene just doesn't really feel earned at all. Because what more could Shepard have done? Shepard hasn't shown any different side of his character to what he did before. And why is it that only Makarov killing Soap is what sparked him to kill Shepard? Even though he said he would only kill him before if he doesn't do as he asked. Now this is a wild theory, but earlier in the campaign, Price almost dies when he's exposed to the chemical gas that Tony are trying to launch. And then, for some weird reason, he just is suddenly better. And there's no real consequences to him being exposed to this gas. You know, you would expect that he's going to fall ill or be a bit more unhinged in the next mission because his psyche is not all together. But then after that, he seemed to heal and just be completely fine. And then it's never really mentioned again in the campaign. And it makes me feel like this whole scene was just a way for them to trick us with the marketing for the campaign. Because, of course, they showed the little snippet where it seemed to imply that Captain Price was injured and he might die. Bad people worried, but then we play the campaign and there's not really any threat there. Captain Price didn't die, he never even came close to dying, he just randomly was exposed to gas and then was suddenly better. Very odd. There should have at least been, you know, a few missions where he was sick or wasn't even fit enough to go to combat. Now this is my wild theory. What if he actually was still damaged psychologically from the gas and maybe that kind of led to his sudden change in switch, in motor at the end where he goes and kills Shepard. Maybe that could be somewhat influenced by the gas. Now, I personally don't believe this theory. It's only about 5% chance of this actually being the case, but it's just a way for me to kind of justify the drastic change of character. And it's also a way for me to kind of justify that campaign mission earlier where he just suddenly gets better after being exposed, which felt kind of pointless. And I'm just thinking maybe that is because it did actually play some importance. It just wasn't very obvious to us. But yeah, I know this is a very far-fetched theory, so 
just ignore it if it feels too much for you. Now, likewise, as to why I feel like this doesn't feel earned that Shepard is killed by Captain Price is the fact that near the end of the game, of course, Graves as well as Shepard are testifying to Congress and both of them backstab each other. Shepard says he never gave the orders to fire on Task Force 1 for 1 and Graves says, yes, he did, but he didn't follow through with those orders. So they both lie and both stab each other in the back. Did you authorize Shadow Company? to fire on a task force under your command in Las Amas, Mexico? No, I did not. Mr. Graves, were you given orders to use lethal force against TF-141? Yes, I was. Quiet, quiet in this chamber. Who gave you those orders? General Herschel Shepard. Did you act? On those orders, Mr. Graves? No, absolutely not, sir. Quiet! Quiet! Shepard, of course, is only thinking about himself, and that's why he lies and doesn't tell the truth. In terms of Graves, yes, he also is only thinking about himself, but also he's thinking about Shadow Company. He needed to go through with this because Shadow Company's reputation was ruined, and if he didn't lie, it would be forever tarnished. There's no comeback. But it does show, of course, that Shepard and Graves, they never even trusted each other and would backstab each other the moment they deemed it necessary, which just further proves they are not trustworthy in the future. Now, one may argue, well, this is part of Captain Price's motivation to kill Shepard because he lies once again, but how is this anything new? Shepard has consistently always been untrustworthy along with Graves. This hasn't shown anything new about their characters. They even remark as such after this hearing. Fuck me. I stabbed each other in the back. Still saving their own skins. Every man for himself. That's the difference between us and them. We're gonna let this stand, boss. The best way to end the war it's to win it. No prisoners. And also, although Shepard does lie, he also does as he was asked by Task Force 1 for 1 when he was captured. Own up. Tell us everything. You know everything. Congress doesn't. And I bet they'd be. They'd be all ears, wouldn't they, eh? That's it? No. You clear my name. Tell them who I am, what you gave me, and why. No one else had the balls to do what I did for you. For all of you. Then do the right thing, General. All your intel on Makarov, your boy Greaves on a leash. Say yes. You get a warm ride home. He was told that he needs to clear Farah's name. He needs to tell the US that he has been working with the Yuzikstan Liberation Force and Farah and that they are not a terrorist organization. And he does so in the congressional hearing. We owe a debt of gratitude to our task force and to the ULF for our success against Vladimir Makarov and his private army. Much has been said about the ULF. Are Farah Karim and her soldiers a terror organization? No, Farah Karim is and always has been an ally to the United States and our Western partners in the region. How did uh, Commander Karim obtain American armament? For nearly a decade, I sent weapons to Commander Karim to support her missions against Al Qatala and Russian incursions into Urzikstan. Were those shipments legal? No. In order to save lives, I commissioned illegal shipments with funds I approved myself. Quiet, quiet, please. So this implies that Makarov's plan to frame the ULF is all pointless because their name gets cleared at the end. So why, after Shepard doing them a favor, does he then get killed? I understand he lied in this scene, but at the same time, he also did them a favor, so it's just a bit weird why he just gets killed like this. It's a very unhinged thing for Captain Price to do, which is why I was saying maybe the gas was affecting his brain, or maybe he was just so traumatized by Soap's death that this caused that. But, you know, he's been in war for a very long time, and I'm sure he's seen many friends die before. So I'm not sure what would be so different about Soap, and they haven't even been together that long, it seems. And overall, that's why I feel like this scene feels so unearned, but what does this mean for the future in terms of Graves? Well, I guess Shadow Company are safe now, and they're probably going to continue to work with Task Force 1 
one for one together, even though I don't think they're going to ever have, you know, a cordial relationship, but they're going to have to put their differences aside for the greater good, just like in Modern Warfare 3's campaign. But I could definitely see some tension rising now that Captain Price has had a wire snap in his brain and he's going to be a lot darker. I could definitely see him being a lot rougher and tougher on Graves and something could spark there where, you know, maybe Captain Price kills Graves even, something wild like that. I could definitely see some sort of bigger tension building between Shadow Company and Task Force 1 for 1 as a result of Price being more unhinged now. And also, what is going to be the consequence of Captain Price killing Shepard? Is Price going to be found responsible for him doing this? Who are they going to suspect? Surely there are cameras all over this place. Surely he would get found out, and surely Laswell would get in trouble as well for allowing him access. Unless she's just going to erase all of the cameras and stuff like that, but there will be a lengthy investigation following these events, and in what world would Captain Price not be discovered? I feel like he's not going to be found out. Out, but it just seems so unrealistic and it seems very unrealistic that he would do this without the fear of being found out as well And also considering the fact that Graves and Shepard testified in Congress There was going to be a consequence to this since both of them backstabbed each other Graves had the upper hand He saved Shadow Company's reputation by throwing Shepard under the bus So Shepard would have eventually been facing legal consequences So there were already consequences for Shepard coming up. He already was found to be lying to Congress, and yet Captain Price ruins any potential justice and just kills him. When justice could have come from the legal system, which I know isn't reliable, and, and higher-ups in the military get let off all of the time, so that very well could have happened to Shepard, but at the same time, there would have been some kind of investigation following this, and they would have been trying to figure out who is lying, Graves or Shepard. And now that Shepard is gone, they're immediately going to side with Graves, I guess, probably. And also, it seems dodgy on Graves' part and Shadow Company's part that Shepard randomly dies afterwards, surely the government would suspect that Shadow Company slash Graves were involved and might be responsible for his death, so that Shepard is not able to contradict or go against anything that Graves was saying. So it all just seems a bit fishy and I don't know how it's going to play out from here. Now whilst I enjoy the setup that this cutscene makes for the future of the story, it also feels very jarring and kind of unearned. Because after Soap dies, I feel like we needed a scene afterwards where we see the character Characters, and especially Captain Price vowing to go after Makarov and we should have had some sort of short scene talking about what Makarov is up to next, what his plan is because that would set up the stage for the sequel but after Soap dies there's nothing we don't hear of what Makarov is doing next he literally just runs away and we don't even bother to run after him or go after him literally nothing happens and that's why this campaign just doesn't feel like it even has an ending and I really do think that before we got this scene of Shepard we should have had a scene prior where where Captain Price was just losing it and vowing revenge on Makarov to then see that there's a wire in his brain that has broken and then we get the post credit scene showing him kill Shepard because otherwise we just kind of see Soap abruptly die and then suddenly Captain Price's character has completely changed. I would have liked to see just a slight little snippet introduced to kind of lead into that cutscene because without it, it kind of feels quite jarring and again, I don't really know why Laswell even allowed him to do this and I don't know what that means for her morals in the future as well. And regardless of us getting a scene, you know, of Captain Price and the others vowing to go after Makarov and avenge Soap and get revenge on Makarov, we definitely needed to have something about what Makarov is up to next. And it's just like I said earlier in the video, I'm really worried that the reason we didn't get something about what Makarov is up to next is because it's just been saved for the post-launch seasonal cutscenes on Modern Warfare 3, and that's where they'll set up the stage for what Makarov is up to next. And it just feels like that story will start feeling very dragged out if that's what happens, because it felt like that's what they were doing in Modern Warfare 2's post-launch. They were building up Makarov's plan with invading Urzikstan with the gas and the missiles. Then we got Modern Warfare 3's campaign and it was basically that same story retold all over again and then he just randomly coiled soap and ran away. And then if we have Modern Warfare 3's post-launch once again just talking about what is happening with Makarov next and you know Captain Price and the others going after him and that builds into the next game it's just going to feel like a repeat of what we've already had before and we don't need this long of an introduction to Makarov. We've already had him in the original trilogy anyways so we can kind of get somewhat of a gist even though he's, he's his own unique character now with different motivations, it is just not necessary to get this much. In terms of Modern Warfare 3's campaign in general, I really feel like more people should have died in this campaign, and maybe that's what's going to happen in the next campaign, which, like I said, it just feels like the story is getting dragged out, but the reason why I think that more people should have died is because they needed to show the havoc that Makarov will cause, and Soap, of course, was the most predictable character to die since he died in the original. And that's the problem with these reboots. Whilst Modern Warfare 2019 told an almost entirely unique story, the last two games have tread on old ground, but 
I'll just retold things in a much less impactful and much less emotional way. If we look at Soap's death in the original trilogy, for example, it was such an awesome emotional moment. If we look at Soap's death in this campaign, it's done so much worse and it's just so jarring. Again, if we look at Shepard's betrayal, it came out of nowhere in the original trilogy. So when they did it again, it was so predictable that this was coming. And the problem is they should be trying to do twists on these original narratives instead of just trying to do them in a slightly different way, but in a much more predictable and less impactful way. I definitely think they should have tried to do spins on these stories. For example, Soap killing Makarov instead of the other way around, or Shepard's not betraying us this time. Or maybe he still does betray us, but he has different motivations to before. Maybe Graves could have been the one to actually get him to betray us instead of the other way around. Anyways, they're just some dumb ideas I've come up with quickly on the top of my head. I'm sure with some more pondering, I could think of some better ones, but I'm just saying that I don't want them to just do what they did before, but worse. Try and do something different in terms of the narrative and the main story beats. Now, this whole game, like I said before, it kind of just establishes Makarov, of course, escaping the Gulag. And we learn, of course, that Task Force 141 have past history with him. And then he plans these false flag attacks to frame the ULF, Urzikstan. False flag operations. He wants a war. East versus West. The title fight. But then we seem to stop these very easily. He randomly shows up and then kills Soap at the end, and then the credits roll. It's all just so weird. Makarov was also shown to be so calculated at the beginning of the campaign, as he was responsible for so much between Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2. He was kind of the person, you know, moving all of the chess pieces behind the scenes. He was doing all of this from within the Gulag, by the way, being imprisoned. He was commandeering things, using a phone from within the Gulag, and he planned the attacks on the Vedan Stadium. He planned his escape from prison and the aftermath in those four years in the prison. He then escapes and starts enacting this big master plan, but then nothing comes of it. And this makes us feel like, well, maybe Makarov isn't as calculated and isn't as smart as he was being made to, out to be at the beginning of this campaign. And that's the problem with them trying to drag out this story. With us being able to basically stop him so easily in this campaign, you know, we get information from Melina so easily, we stop the missiles so easily, all of this, nothing ends up actually coming of Makarov's plan in this campaign. It makes it feel like he, it, he doesn't have it as together as we once thought. And it's all just to set up yet another sequel with no real ending or substance. And like I said, post-launch, they're probably going to have some cutscenes showing, you know, what, what Makarov's up to next and the next stage of his plan. But what was the point? Already Modern Warfare 2's post-launch established he was trying to start a world war. This game established nothing new. Makarov's motivations for starting a war in this campaign are also a lot more compelling than the original trilogy. If you've read his character bio, basically his parents were working within the Russian government, but they were trying to do good and change things from within. And he watched as the Soviet Union fell, and he woke up one day to find his father's hanged body. And I guess that was the tipping point. And he thought his father and the Soviet Union were weak. And he wanted to be different. He wanted to be ruthless and do whatever means necessary for Russia to not be a laughing stock of the world. That's how he thought people viewed it. And so he began a lifelong obsession. He then ended up joining the Russian military and then basically enacted an unsanctioned attack on Urzikstan when he was working working on Barkov's forces and they were unsanctioned and basically after that Russia stripped him of all of his military honours and he joined the Kony group to then plan the attack on Verdansk and then of course like we see in the campaign Task Force 141 managed to stop him. Well they don't really stop him, he intended to be captured to even start this attack and this was all just to get Russia's attention and then he was of course put in the gulag after that. But yeah overall his motivation just seems a lot less compelling because basically he just has daddy issues and he just seems like he's a whining crybaby just desperate for attention in this campaign compared to the original, which the original Makarov just felt a lot more unhinged and his motivations were a lot different. He basically just hated the West and he wanted to see the fall of the West in a big war between East and West and send the world into utter chaos, which I think is different from Makarov's motivations, although there are some similar parallels. Now finally, let's talk about Soap's death itself. Like I said, it's very jarring where he just suddenly dies, but I understand, you know, Captain Price isn't just going to suddenly, you know, not defuse the bomb and just be emotional in that moment. They need to focus on the situation at hand. That's fair. Then after that, we get a cutscene where Captain Price, Gaz, and also Ghost, and they have his ashes in an urn, and they're on a cliff face, and, you know, they let them go, and, you know, they're saying that he's the greatest man ever, or whatever, you know. I personally just don't really like this scene. It just feels quite forced and unnatural, and it kind of feels like a way for them to just be like, look, we did something to honor his death. Personally, it just doesn't feel very realistic. Even the way they talk about soap just doesn't really feel very human to me. It feels 
feels like it was forced. And I really feel like Soap's death was not even planned in this campaign. It, it really feels like a last minute decision. They needed a death in this campaign because they had gone the prior two games with not having deaths and constantly bringing back characters. So they needed to kill someone. They went the safest route with killing Soap again. But he was just done so suddenly. And then they needed this scene for some sort of closure for it. Personally, I didn't really like this scene, but I know some people may be different. It was, of course, better than nothing, but I guess you can't really, you know, praise them for that. But yeah, personally, it felt kind of weird. And I guess what happened here is that his funeral or whatever had to be off the books. And that's probably why there's only a few of them together. The funeral probably took place, you know, previously. And we also see at the end that Laswell has to basically cover up Soap's death because Task Force 1 for 1, you know, is an off the books task force. So basically no one can know about Soap. It seems like Soap doesn't really have any friends outside of Task Force 1 for 1 even. So that was basically his family. And no one probably even really knows of him outside. So everything was kind of covered up by Laswell, which is definitely sad to see. And they probably just had a very private funeral with just some members of the CIA. And then I guess they let his ashes go later. But yeah, it did seem very, very weird. And it sucks that Laswell had to do that. And again, this whole incident just doesn't really feel like an ending. When a character dies, you don't just then suddenly end the game when your villain isn't even dealt with at all. And there's not even any sort of build up to what he's going to do next. It isn't an ending. This isn't how you end a game. This just feels like the setup. This feels like what should have happened in the middle of the game. And then after Soap dies, they continue to go after Makarov and stop him or fail. And then it builds to something bigger. But just none of that happens. He just runs off. And then what next? What is Makarov up to next? We don't know. It is such a bizarre choice for them to do it this way when, like I said before, even just adding in an extra scene or two would have helped this a lot. It definitely wouldn't have made the campaign good or fixed a lot of the other issues with the campaign feeling very lackluster and filler, but adding just a couple scenes, one where they swear to go after Makarov after what he's done to Soap and want revenge, and then another scene, you know, talking about Makarov's plan and they've discovered intel and what he's doing next, you know, just adding in those two little scenes right at the end would have at least had some sort of proper ending. You know, it definitely wouldn't have made the campaign great, it wouldn't have made it not filler, but it would have at least felt like more of a proper ending and would have made the ending feel a lot less jarring. And we see on Laswell's screen, basically Makarov's location is unknown we don't know what he's up to next and that's it it ends so overall that's my general thoughts on Modern Warfare 3's campaign and what the ending means I know this has been a very long video so I hope you have enjoyed it like I said I am really excited to see a dark side of Captain Price but at the same time I feel like everything building up to that felt very unearned like I've expressed in this video as to why I think it was necessary that Shepard died in this campaign because that's basically the main thing that moved the story forward but really the only two takeaways from this campaign are uh, Makarov escapes the gulag and he's probably planning something for the next game and he's very evil that's basically it and then of course the next big thing is Captain Price now has a darker side he killed Shepard they're the two main takeaways from this campaign literally everything else doesn't matter at all and that's why it feels so lackluster aside from the fact that the missions themselves feel very boring and lackluster but the story just isn't well weaved together anyways thank you for watching the video make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information so anyways thank you for watching and uh, bye